Now we're going to go through different habitats. The first one we go through here is the forest called the Little Aturi Forest. Now many of the animals that live in the forest have survived because of the camouflage they have on their bodies. And so hopefully we'll get to see some of that as we are out there. So you look on your right hand side all the way up there by that fence, there's an okapi. And okapi is pretty cool looking animals actually. They have these black stripes on their legs and also this dark chestnut color on their body. Now the okapi are very good at hiding. They weren't even discovered by the western world until 1901, which is very recent for such a large animal there. Now, the okapi they're also related to the giraffe. They have the same skull, the giraffe has the same tongue. The giraffe has, has anyone seen a giraffe's tongue before? Yeah, they're very long. They're called a prehensile tongue. Uh, that just means, the word prehensile means they can grab things. Now up on the right, up top of this hillside are some kudu. Now these kudu are a little bit like deer actually. Now they have stripes on their bodies, very large ears as well. And then we have this black rhino on the left across the water. Now, the black rhinos have a prehensile body part as well. It's their upper lip. And if you can tell, right now it's pushing all that food into its mouth using its upper lip there. It can grab onto things using it. Lots of muscles. There aren't very many black rhinos in the world. There's fewer than 5,000 because of the poaching for the horns they have on their heads. Now, if you look on the right over here, some bongo as well. Now, bongo are kind of a reddish brown color. They've got stripes on their bodies and uh, horns as well. Now, the younger ones are still growing their horns out. But both males and females have them. Now, the kudu that were on top of the hill, the gray ones there, they don't have horns because they are females. Only the male kudu will have horns on their heads. But if you notice the bongo, the kudu, and the okapi, they all have stripes on their bodies. Stripes are great camouflage for hiding out in the forest, behind all the bushes, the shrubbery, and the trees. But we are headed out to our next habitat. Now this is the river called the Safi River. So we'll see what animals we can find down here. Now we usually find some hippos down here in the water. They usually spend most of their time in the water, so you'll probably see them. Now a whole group of them together, they're called a float, which is kind of fun. A load of hippos on your left, the whole bunch in the water there. You see their backs sticking up there. Now hippos can hold their breath for about eight minutes at a time. It's a very long time. And they don't actually swim, they walk on the bottom of the riverbed. They use their feet to pull them along there. And then some uh, pelicans here as well. These pelicans are called pink-backed pelicans, uh, but they're white and gray most of the year. They turn pink during mating season. That's why they're given that name. And a group of them are called a pod. Both the male and female pelicans build their nests together. They maintain their eggs together. So they share those responsibilities there. Now those hippos are herbivores. They eat vegetation, plants, and things. Uh, they usually graze on the banks of the river at night, but they're still very dangerous. They're considered one of the most dangerous animals in Africa, but not the only ones. Nile crocodile are pretty dangerous too. Very aggressive. Now, Nile crocodile are cold-blooded animals, so they do have to use their environment to control their body temperature. So, some on the land, some in the water, and uh, occasionally you'll see some with their mouths open just sitting about. And if you see that, all they're doing is cooling off. They use their mouths, much like a dog uses their mouth to cool off. And they can hold their breath under the water for about two hours at a time. This is a very long time. Now, many of the animals that come down to the river won't know the crocodile are there because they can't see them. But works very well for the crocodile. They don't hunt like other animals do, so their food comes to them. So we're headed down into the savannah 
and the savannah is the largest part of the safari. So we're going to be in the savannah for a while. So just on the right, all the way back in the trees, there's a giraffe standing over there. Now there's about nine different types of giraffe all throughout Africa. The kind that we see here are uh, Maasai. They're named after the Maasai tribe that live out in Africa. They were discovered on their land. And we'll probably see quite a few more as we go about uh, the loop here. Now there are three baby giraffe out in the reserve, so we want to keep our eyes open. Very young. They're about six feet tall when they're born, so they're already very tall. But between the three of them, they're three to five months old, so very young still. Over on the left, there's some dogs. They're called painted dogs against the far wall, against the sliver. I'm going to go on the other side of these rocks here. Now, the painted dogs get their name for the colors they have. They've got all kinds of colors on their fur. So, black and white and gray, a light brown color, all sorts. And they are actually endangered. Many of, the, of them are hunted and poached for those coats they have. They're very unique. Not many animals have the coloring like that. Out to our left in the far corner, some sable antelope, they're called. Really cool animals. And the sable antelope uh, are kind of that reddish color. Now the males are actually quite a bit darker than those. Those are all females. And sometimes they're completely black as well. They also have a mane, much like a horse does. So kind of cool looking. And they've been out of the reserve for a while. They actually, today is day number five. They're back in the reserve. So fun to see them. Now up here, walking uh, away on the right-hand side, these are some eland. They're called Patterson's eland. Mommy. Now both the male and female Patterson eland have horns on their heads. Mommy, now they're crossing over to the left now. Okay. If you can see their horns, if we're close enough there, they have one twist in their horns. Now these elands have very powerful legs. They can actually jump about eight feet in the air. So really incredible. So there's more giraffe out here on the right, quite a few of them, and they're along the bushes on the far side over there, in the, in the grass a little bit, and then one's right here too close to us with its head poking up. Bushes. Now these giraffe have uh, these little tiny horns on their head. They're called ossicones. They're covered in fur, it's part of their skull. If you remember the okapi in the forest, the males will have ossicones as well. But female and male giraffe have them. And they've got those long tongues. They're called prehensile tongues. They use them just like we use our hands. And that bush has a giraffe head in it. Yes. A group of giraffe are called a tower, which is very fitting because they're so tall. They're also called a journey when they migrate. So you may hear both of those terms used. Looks like all three of the younger giraffe are there in the center. Look at that tall one. Look at that now some wildebeest up here on the corner. Also some little tiny animals called springbok. Light brown with white on the bottom and a dark stripe on their side. Springbok are given their name because they jump up and down when they run. It's called pronking, and they can do that about 50 miles per hour very fast. So all of those uh, wildebeest are herd animals. They stay together, migrate together as well. Another giraffe out there in those palm trees. The giraffes spend most of their time eating, lounging around, grazing. They actually don't sleep very much. They only sleep about 30 minutes a day, and that's it. But they function very well on the So we go around the corner here. We want to watch both sides, the left side and the right side. We may find animals on either side. On 
the left, some mandrill, mandrill or monkeys on top of the rocks here. Now, they had most identifying features they have. Blue face with a red nose. The males have blue bottoms as well. Alpha male will have a golden mane. He's the largest one. Now, mandrill are monkeys. Biggest difference between a monkey and an ape are the tails. Monkeys have tails, apes do not. Look on your right in the far corner, way up on the hillside there. Way up there, yeah. Very large. So, the watering hole here on the right. Great places for all kinds of animals to gather. We may be able to catch a sliver of them here, but there's this large bush on the left, so. Just barely, not really. Yeah, that bush is in the way there. But there is another watering hole up ahead, and we are going to try and see if we can find some more of them up ahead. Usually one elephant hanging out alone is a good indication that they're, they may be a male. They actually will leave their mothers between 13 to 16 years old, early adolescent ages. The females stay together their entire lifetimes. So they live very long, very similar to humans. An average lifetime for an elephant is about 60 years or so. Some can live longer than that, uh, more than 70. And so a lot of that depends on their habitat, their environment. What'd you guys do? I agree. So we have these walls here on either side of us. Clay walls, red clay. Now elephants will eat red clay. Which sounds really strange. But their minerals in the clay very, very healthy for them, so they're drawn to it. Much like when we have a craving for a certain food or drink. Now the elephants we see out here, they're called African elephants. And you can tell by looking at the shapes of their ears. They're shaped like Africa, so that's how we can tell. If you look on your left out here, I'm going to go around the corner. There's a little baby elephant. Now, when they're born, they're about 300 pounds. This is the average for them. Mother elephants are pregnant for 22 months. Very long time. And they will nurse with their mothers for up to five years. So just beyond on the left there. Now she's uh, closer to 500 pounds right now, just a few months old. Wow. And so always learning. Lots of fun. Now a group of elephants are called a parade. They are led by the matriarch, who's the eldest female. She has the most knowledge about where to find food and water and how to survive. Very intelligent animals. Flamingo. These are called a greater flamingo, and they are the tallest of all the flamingos. They grow up to about five feet tall. So very tall. Now they are pink, but they're the lightest shade of pink as well. And that pink coloring actually comes from beta carotene that's in the shrimp they eat. They're naturally they're white and gray. It's a white gray color. Shrimp is so good, right? Now a group of them are called a flamboyance. So flamboyance of flamingos, kind of fun to, to say. One last look at those elephants there as we turn the corner. use mud wallows, elephants will use them, so will rhinos and warthogs, all kinds of animals. And what they do is roll around or wallow in the mud there and protect their skin from the sun, help stay a little cooler, use the environment there as a natural sunblock 
but also the cool one when it gets really hot as well. It's a, a mud wall of just yeah. mud. Just mud. Yeah. And then we have a rhino here. Yeah. Now, uh, rhinos are pretty amazing. Now, white rhinos are related to black rhinos in the forest, but they are much larger. They've got about 5,000 pounds. Their mouths are a different shape as well. White rhinos' mouths are wide and flat and long. They can run about 40 miles per hour. It's extremely fast for those rhinos. If you look on your left in the trees, there's a couple of cheetah way back there in the brown. They're just past the trees where the green grass turns brown a little bit further up. There's two of them laying together. They're very dark, uh, dark spots on their bodies. Now they blend in very well with their environment, which is very important to them. They're very fast. Some can run up to 70 miles miles per hour, which is incredibly fast, but they are sprinters. They cannot maintain those speeds for long distances, so they still rely on blending in so they get as close to their prey as possible. Look on the second highest rock on your left. Wow. Oh, no way! Look on top of the rocks, Meg! Now this whole area here is called the Kopi. And lions love kopis for a couple of reasons. They've got all kinds of uh, shaded areas and protection from the sun there. That's very important to the lions because they are nocturnal. They sleep almost all day long. And they try to get down in the uh, shade to get out of the sun during the day, especially when it gets really hot outside. Now the females and the males lions, they have different responsibilities out there. The males are the guardians, the protectors. So the females are the hunters, and it's their job to hunt and to lead the hunt as well. Now the mane the male has is very important. It'll help protect his head and neck if he's in a fight. The color also means something. The darker it is, the more dominant he'll be. Over on the left, some warthogs. If you look where that tree is in the center to the left there, and they're the same color as the dirt and very small, so they kind of blend in. Now, the